Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we have a manga review of chapter 917, The Treasure Ship of Provisions. And I can't say we're off to the greatest of starts with a name like that, it just sounds weird. But I'm hoping the official translation will make it sound a bit less awkward. With that said, this chapter is actually pretty fun, with the first big event of note being the introduction of Speed, one of the headliners that was mentioned along with Hold'em a few chapters ago. So in my mind, I was picturing some sort of weird leopard person, and I was prepared to be pretty disappointed after the introduction of Hold'em, but Speed is actually pretty cool looking. The human portion of her conforms pretty simply to Oda's standard style of drawing women, but I do quite like the addition of the floppy horse ears, as well as the overall two-faced design, with half of her aesthetic being black and white, cut down the middle, which even includes her hair. And of course, there's the fact that she's a centaur, a type of creature that we've seen fairly commonly in the series, actually. Whether it be the centaurs on Punk Hazard or Frankie Centaur from the Sea Train, and in fact, I'm pretty sure there were even a couple of zombie centaurs on Thriller Bark. So goody, we can add another centaur to this world. It's almost enough to do a top five best centaurs list, actually. But just as Hold'em came with an Odoresque bizarre quirk, Speed has a couple of quirks of her own, both of which I love. I found the whole smiling like a horse thing pretty hilarious and even laughed out loud, which is kind of bad because I was reading this chapter while working backstage on a show. So yeah, that, that wasn't good. But rather interestingly, this horse smile user also possesses horse vision, which is the ability to see in a 350 degree spectrum. And that sounds pretty cool, but there is still a 10 degree blind spot and that happens to be in a very important place, which is directly in front of the horse, as well as directly behind the horse around the tail area. Given that Oda has gone to the trouble to highlight this vision, I suspect that will come into play at some stage. Other than that though, the moment that intrigued me most this week was the beginning of Law's confrontation with Hawkins. So during the last review, I went to great length to present the theory that the two of them may have actually been working together, and this chapter dismissed any inclination along those lines in one fell swoop. At this stage, Hawkins is most definitely an enemy, and a particularly dangerous one, because he knows their faces. Also during the last chapter, I wasn't really sure why Hawkins would be so worried if he truly was on the side of Kaido, because he was very comfortable with dealing with Luffy and Zoro on his own. So surely with the help of Hold'em, he'd be even more confident. But this chapter did present a potential answer to that by name dropping the Calamity Jack, who it seems was finally dragged from the depths of the ocean. And having experienced Jack before, I can understand why it would be pretty undesirable to have a situation occur in which it became necessary for him to show up. As stated in the chapter, he would likely destroy the entire town, and I wouldn't be surprised if he took out his frustrations on the headliners, including Hawkins. And just to sidetrack briefly, I also really enjoyed the moment where Luffy was describing what happened on Zo, and Kiku was completely unable to follow and just thought he was spouting nonsense about random animals. Very good. In any case, this chapter ends with Luffy destroying Holden with a red hawk, which looks pretty damn fantastic by the way. It reminded me a lot of Luffy's series of punches inflicted against Caesar because Hold'em's face looks strikingly similar to the gas man when it has a big old dent in it. But as a result of this strike, it looks like a conflict with Jack may be incoming. And that idea excites me quite a bit actually because Luffy's group present in Kuri should be able to take Jack down actually. And dealing with the calamities in isolation is probably the best way to go about taking on Kaido rather than trying to fight the bulk of his forces head on. And you know, it also might be a nice chance for Hawkins to switch sides, you know, when he uh, sees the opportunity to defeat Feet a calamity. But moving on, Shuten Maru was name dropped again during this chapter, as well as the name of his group of thieves, which are called the Atomoyama Thieves. And my extraordinarily basic knowledge of Japanese allows me to know that Atama means head and Yama means mountain. So hey, they'll probably end up being translated like the mountain head thieves or something along those lines, actually probably much cooler sounding. That aside, we're starting to put a lot of stock into this Shuten Maru guy, with Hold'em assuming that people as strong as Luffy and Zoro must be his subordinates. So this dude bar must be something pretty decent, but right now I kind of couldn't care less. There are so many already established characters, including basic straw hats, and I'm just desperate to see back in the story that name dropping presumably new and intriguing characters doesn't really do a whole lot for me. So yeah, looking forward to eventually meeting this person, I guess. I just can't get excited for little teasers like this though, when I know that there is so much more that could be potentially happening on Wano. Something else I didn't really care for was the entire first page of the chapter. I've gone back on it a few times to see if I'd missed something, but my conclusion is that I really don't see the point in taking the time to see what's happening back in Okabora Town. There are no characters of any importance unless that Momonosuke looking kid is all of a sudden going to become integral, but we already have Tama to serve the role of cute child abused by circumstance. Not only that, but Tama herself already did exactly what this kid did and drank the poisoned river water, showing the desperation of the citizens of Wano. And the first page of this chapter was just like, emphasizing that point, which is a bit uncharacteristic of Oda who generally finds the most economical possible way to convey a particular idea. So this page feels yeah, a bit like a waste to me. It could have been completely removed from the chapter and we wouldn't have lost a thing. 
Something that is pretty relevant though is the cover page, continuing Bellamy's journey of becoming a bona fide flagsmith. And I think my theory of him crafting flags with the Grand Fleet is looking scarily close to confirmed, as he is quite clearly drawing the Straw Hat Pirates Jolly Roger in a town that apparently uses unrippable cloth. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Go Bellamy. But that pretty much does it for chapter 917. Pretty cool chapter with some minor complaints, but as always, I'm very keen for next week. If you enjoyed this video, then please feel free to like, favorite, or subscribe. And if you are in any way inclined to support this individual, independent channel, then also please feel free to check out my Patreon, Discord server, or Twitter, the links to which are in the handy description below. And finally, please do comment with your own thoughts on the chapter. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.